Section 8.9 is interval notation and solving inequalities. And so this slide, I would pause the video and write down these notes about any interval notation. So here's the inequality notation. So anytime you have a strictly greater than or x is greater than a, then it starts at a and it's going all the way up to positive infinity. It's always a parenthesis on any infinity because you can never actually achieve the value of infinity. If it's not or equal to, if it's strictly greater than or strictly less than, it is also a parenthesis. So then the way we'd graph that is you'd have your graph, you'd have your letter, it's an open circle, and then greater than, we want the arrow to go off towards the bigger numbers, towards positive infinity, which is to the right. Less than, x is less than or equal to b, so anytime you have an or equal to, that's going to be a bracket. Um, and we want everything from negative infinity up to b. Include b, don't include infinity, we can't include infinity. So then your graph, you would have a closed circle on B because we want to include it. It is a solution to the inequality. And we want everything less than, so we want to go towards the negatives. And or, so we want everything less than negative 2, so from negative infinity and negative two, up to negative 2, not included on both. Or, the interval notation for or is a union, which is a capital U. And then 3 to infinity, everything greater than 3, so including 3 bracket up to positive infinity. So the graph, you have your number line, you have both your numbers, open circle on negative 2, closed circle on positive 3, or is like ors of a boat, you go out in opposite directions, so you're going off either way, less than negative 2 and greater than 3. And and, so x is greater than negative 3 and it's less than or equal to 5, that's the same thing as writing negative 3 is less than x is less than or equal to 5. Always make sure when you're writing these compound inequalities, it has to be true. Your inequalities always have to face the same direction, and they have to be true. 5 is greater than negative 3, so this is a true statement. So when it goes to your interval, you have a parenthesis on negative 3. You don't want to include it. Bracket on 5. Open circle on negative 3. Close circle on positive 5. And you want to shade the part that's in between. So here's two examples. I want you to write the inequality in interval notation and graph them. So for the first one, x is less than or equal to 3 and greater than negative 1 is the same thing as saying negative 1 is less than x is less than or equal to 3. So I have a parenthesis, negative 1, comma, up to 3 with a bracket because we want to include 3. So our graph is going to look the same. We have an open circle on negative 1, a closed circle on positive 3, and we want all the x's in between x is less than or equal to negative 1, or excuse me, positive 1. We're going to have parenthesis negative infinity up to 1. Close your bracket. It's a bracket because we want to include it. And then we have 1, a closed circle, and everything less than 1. So here's some notes on solving inequalities. Basically, for the most part, you solve the inequality just like you would if it was an equation. The one thing that does matter is if you multiply or divide by... Um, a negative number, it switches the sign of your inequality. So I would pause the video and write down what you need from this slide. So here's an example. 4x plus 7 is greater than or equal to 2x minus 3. So I want you to pause the video, solve this, write your answer in interval notation, and also graph. So I subtracted 2x from both sides, and I subtracted 7 from both sides to combine like terms. So you get 2x is greater than or equal to negative 10. Divide both sides by 2, you get x is greater than or equal to negative 5, or negative 5 with a closed bracket up to positive infinity. So on your graph, negative 5, closed circle off towards positive infinity. With a compound inequality like this one, you have two options. You can either split it up into two separate inequalities, so the first part and then the second part and then solve and combine it back together. Or you can treat each one and just do everything, whatever you do, do all three sides. So again, same thing, pause the video, solve the inequality, write an interval notation, and graph. So I just treated this as one big one with basically two different parts. So whatever you do to one side, you have to do it to all three sides. So I added two to, both, uh, to all three sides. So I got negative three is less than three x is less than three. Divided everything by 3, you get negative 1 is less than x is less than 1, or parentheses, negative 1 up to 1, op uh, close your parentheses, open circles on both, and you want the part that's in the middle. When you're solving an absolute value inequality, we split it up into two parts, just like we do absolute value equations, where one side you make it positive and one side you make it negative. The only difference is on the negative side, you flip your inequality. 
So just like an absolute value equation, make sure you clear off anything attached to the outside of your absolute value first. So once you get just your absolute value and then everything else on the other side, you split it up into two inequalities. In the first one, you take the inside and just keep your inequality and your sign the same, less than or equal to three. The second one, take your inside of your inequality, flip your inequality, and change the sign. So 2x plus 4 is greater than or equal to negative 3. And then we need a word in the middle, either and or or. This one is a less than, so it's going to be an and. So the way I always remember is less than is and and greater is or. So once you've got the absolute value isolated, we have a less than, so it's going to be an and. So go ahead and pause the video. Solve these two inequalities. Write your final answer in interval notation and graph. So I split the two of them up and then subtracted 4 from both sides for both inequalities. So on this one you get 2x is less than or equal to negative 1. Over here you get 2x is greater than or equal to negative 7. Divide both sides by 2 for both inequalities. Over here you get x is less than or equal to negative 1 half and x is greater than or equal to negative 7 over 2. So and is the same thing as your compound, negative 7 over 2 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to negative 1. So you get closed brackets, negative 7 over 2 up to negative 1 half, and that's what your graph looks like. So now here's another one, absolute value of 2x minus 5 is greater than 3. Go ahead and pause the video and do the same thing. So I split the two of them up, 2x minus 5 is greater than 3, or 2x minus 5 is less than negative 3. Flip the inequality and change the sign. I know it's an or because it is a greater, which is or. So add 5 to everything, you get 2x is greater than 8, or 2x is less than 2. Divide everything by 2, x is greater than 4, or x is less than 1. So you have your compound like this, negative infinity up to 1, parentheses on both. Union, 4 up to infinity, parentheses on both. So graph the two of them, both open circles, or goes out like or is on a boat. So this has been interval notation and solving linear inequalities.